Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. And that breaking news coming from Hamtramck this afternoon where police say a speeding driver blew through a red light while trying to dodge police officers, causing a deadly crash. And we're told one person has died from that crash and several others are injured right now. Let's get right to Jacqueline Francis, live near the scene at Conant and McNichols. Jacqueline. Kimberly and DeMond, the scene just cleared here within the last 10 minutes. You're looking at Conan and McNichols. The traffic is back to normal again. That is just within the last 10 minutes. We want to show you video taken from just a couple hours ago to show you the severity of the situation. The Hamtramck police chief calling this a tragic incident with one person dead and five others in the hospital. So how did this happen? The chief says there was a chase that started when his officers went to stop a car. The people got out of that car and then a allegedly assaulted the officers. That's when the chase got going and police say the car they were chasing blew through the red light, causing a crash. At this time, we're told one person is dead and a handful of others are hurt, taken to various hospitals. Take a listen to what the chief had to say. My condolences to the family. That could have been me. It could have been anybody, you know, it could have been even another officer, you know, just driving by. And unfortunately, these people they don't want to comply with the officers and uh, they assaulted them. And on top of that, they, 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 they drove here high speeds and just flew, blew that red light and literally crashed into multiple cars here. Tragic scene. We're still waiting to get an update on the condition of the five people taken to the hospital. We're told that Detroit police and Michigan State Police are assisting in this investigation. Reporting live in Hamtramck, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. You know, hour by hour, we're getting a better sense of the devastation caused by Hurricane Milton over in Florida. Nine people have died there, including five who were reportedly killed by tornadoes. There were 126 tornado warnings issued in Florida Wednesday, the second most ever issued in a single state on a single day. An estimated 3.4 million customers lost power across Florida, and they're calling it a thousand-year flood in places like St. Petersburg, where Milton dropped more than 18 inches of rain. Jay Gray has the latest from Fort Myers. Hey there, good evening. We're getting our first look right now at Fort Myers Beach, an area that really took a hit from Milton, one of the first to see the effects of this storm, and you can see what it did to this resort. Water pushing across the giant beach here into this area, knocking down fences, pulling up trees, tables scattered, chairs scattered. It is a mess here, and it's a mess that continues across this barrier island. We talked with someone who rode out the storm. Here's what they had to say about what it was like at the height of Milton's attack. Well, it was bad. Once once you realize what was happening, it was very scary. Uh, it's just, I mean, you know, the wind is violent and, uh, and the thumping on the roof, the limbs hitting the roof were, you know, like boulders. Yeah, and now things have calmed down. Obviously, we've got crews scattered across the strike zone right now. Line crews to reestablish power crews, clearing away debris. In some of the areas, restoring that power is going to take not days, but perhaps a week or more. And then the work begins again. This area hit with so many storms over the last several years. They get back to work recovering after Milton. That's the latest right now. I'm Jay Gray, NBC News, Fort Myers Beach. Okay, Jay, Ron Hilliard here with us now with a look at the remnants of Milton and their effect that it's likely going to have, Ron. You know, Kimberly DeMond, we saw a little shift toward the south, south of Tampa with the landfall. It was near Sarasota, but Tampa Bay still got a lot of that heavy rainfall, as you just heard, up to 18 inches in St. Petersburg. Look at this. This white right here indicates about a foot. You see that stretching from almost near Orlando all the way over toward Tampa in the Bradenton area. So while they got less surge or lower surge than what they could have gotten with a direct hit. They still got a lot of rainfall, a lot of flooding. So look at some of these wind gusts up to 100 miles per hour and even greater across the area. You see 102 miles per hour for Sarasota, St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg came in with a top reading of 101 miles per hour, Tampa at 97 miles per hour. So here it is right here. It is now just remnants over the Atlantic. It is moving away from the U.S. It will not return, but the cleanup will last for a long time. Here's a look at 
Comerica Park is fans are all around the stadium enjoying themselves and getting ready for the activities down there and also people downtown for the Red Wings. Here's a look into the city of Detroit temperatures right now coming in in the 60s. We will not be as cool tonight as what we were this morning and last night. I'm going to talk about those temperatures coming up and also a warm up that's in store for tomorrow. That's just moments away. Kimberly and Damon. You know, as people begin surveying the damage, teams are already on the ground working to help those in need. And that includes many volunteers from our area. Before you give our before you give our consumer investigator Hank Winchester is live with some important information. Hank. Yeah, and Kimberly, we know Detroiters always want to help out those that are in need. And right now, obviously, a huge need for people all over the state of Florida. Before you give, though, important information for you. The damage unbelievable. Right now, the Red Cross has already set up a command center near Sarasota. If you would like to donate, these are three organizations that are specifically collecting money and supplies for Milton victims. They include the Red Cross, the United Way, and the Salvation Army. Be cautious, though, of scams, Facebook fundraisers, Craigslist postings, and crowdfunding. Just do your homework. Make sure it is what it appears to be, and better safe than sorry. And what we've done is we've put all of the legitimate organizations on the ground right now working to help those in need. Links to all of those uh, charitable organizations on the Help Me Hank page at clickondetroit.com. We're live here tonight. Hank Winchester, Help Me Hank, Local 4. Okay, thank you, Hank. All right, we are about an hour from first pitch in game four of the American League Division Series at Comerica Park. Tigers looking to avoid a trip back to Cleveland and move on to the ALCS. Yeah, local for anchor Karen Drew is in the crowd right now and outside the ballpark to help guide us through our playoff coverage. Hey there, Karen. Hey there, guys. I can tell you we are rocking and the game has not even started. The fans have been coming down for, gosh, about two hours. If you take a look right here outside of Comerica Park, you can see everyone is lining up. They are ready to clinch this thing and move on to the ALDS. But I will tell you, the energy here is just amazing. We spent a little bit of time right here, right outside the park. I know Sean Lay is also talking with fans. I'll send it over to you to check out your seat. Hey, Sean. So much fun. What a vibe down here. Gritty City. Cartier's here. Cartier's here. All right, Cartier. And Cartier's, Cartier's here. Both Cartier's. We got the fans walking in nonstop here. And also people who have been waiting, all of us, such a long time to celebrate this incredible postseason run. Watch this. Tiger Town alive again as the Tigers restore the roar to Detroit. Go Tigers! Fans are soaking up every moment of this surprise run, a postseason present to the Motor City. What's also fun, focusing on fashion, Tigers fashion. Let's head from Comerica over to Livonia and Pro Sports Zone inside Laurel Park Place Mall. I would say about after 4 o'clock. That's where we love to show you hardworking and hustling John Yu, owner of Pro Sports Zone. Bye. On the phone, on the fly getting the latest Tigers gear in. What are you ordering? Uh, October t-shirts, October ready t-shirts. It's been hot, it's on fire. Do you have any left? Uh, we all out actually, uh, we are, that's my third order coming in. So hopefully I get more today and tomorrow. So by four, Yeah. you have, you have it before game time. I hope so. We just got the hoodies. And here grabbing up that gear, Coco, a woman from Detroit, but was watching the Tigers at home in San Diego yesterday. She got on a plane and is headed to the game. You're watching at home, mm -hmm. game three yesterday. What, you're in San Diego. What was that like watching downtown Detroit going crazy like that? It was awesome. It was, we were going awesome and we could feel like we could feel the stadium. All the way from yeah. San, to San Diego, Detroit to San Diego, you could yes. feel it. Yes. And now you're here. Here I am. And you're buying some Tiger stuff. A little jet lagged, but we're good. We're good indeed. Yesterday here, this place was absolutely rocking. We were outside talking to fans. It was so loud. I love it. And she could feel it all the way. Her feel her hometown roots all the way to San Diego. She's here for the game. Also, guys, no ego on Local 4. We're all a team here. Hobie's live with us talking about no ego on this team on this incredible run. Hobie. That's exactly right, Sean. This is a special season for this team and a special team at that because at any point in time, you never know who's going to come up with the clutch hit or for that bullpen, who's going to be the pitcher to step up in a huge moment. This team has put the team first, and that's what's gotten them to this point. Now just one win away from the ALCS. And I asked A.J. Hinge before this game, how do you even go about creating that type of mindset, that type of attitude for a team to make a run like this? 
outside perspective, it seems like you have an ego-less yeah. team here. I mean, yesterday, <laughs> Kerry was the hero on Monday, gets pinch hit for yesterday. Your bullpen always is evolving. Where does that stem from and where does that come yeah. from and how hard is it to create that in a professional environment? Yeah, I mean, we, we do have the definition of a team. You know, I mean, up and down this lineup, up and down the pitching staff. Um, I'm so happy with how we can deploy our guys at their strengths and their best. And the player buy-in has been the single biggest impact uh, on this entire team. And the bullpen carried this team yesterday in game three. But today they're switching it up a little bit. The Tigers going to a traditional starter. Reese Olsen is going to be on the mound. We'll chat with A.J. Hinch about the decision coming up a little bit later in sports. But the energy is already building here inside Comerica Park, Karen. I know these 44-plus uh, thousand fans are going to be looking forward to what's coming tonight. I mean, the spirit of the city, Hobie, is just amazing. It keeps getting bigger and bigger and better and better every night. And tonight, I think it's going to be off the charts, that's for sure. We're right outside uh, Comerica. I ran into Chris Smiley. He's from Royal Oak. And you've got, uh, you brought your friend Jenny. Let's take a look at Jenny. Yeah, I got Jenny all, all prepared for the game tonight. She's going to help cheer us to a victory. The Tigers are unleashed. And I'm going to say, you just got tickets today, right? Yeah, just today I got lucky. I was watching the news this morning. And then when I uh, happened to be at the Secretary of State in line, I kept trying and trying, and to my surprise, here I am. And here you are, standing room only, but hey, it's a place to be. A standing room, sitting, it don't matter. Everyone's going to be on their feet tonight anyway, so. I think you're right, Chris. So, go right. Tigers. That's yeah. right, go Tigers. Chris, thank you so much. Jenny, thank you so much. Our coverage continues. Uh, we're having fun. We're ready for a party. All right, we'll send it back to you guys. Kim, Devon. Yeah, already so electric. All right, Karen, and we'll be checking back with you a little bit later in the newscast.